so we're going to be replacing an uplift motor in this video. So what you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver and a 3 8 open end wrench. So the first thing you'll want to do is uh, take off the top cover and check and see if your uplift motor has a nut on the top because you'll want to start loosening that one before you start loosening the other three. Most of them won't have a nut at the top, but some of them might. It's just easier to do it like this than the other way around. So we've got the electrical top. Looks like you got a nut there. So you want to take your 3 8 wrench and get that one pre-loosened. You won't be able to completely loosen the nut because as you can see, it starts running into the, um, the uplift housing there. But if you don't loosen that before you start loosening the other three, it's gonna be a lot harder to get, those, get this off once we're in the other service position. So now that we've got that loosened, we're gonna put the top back on. These screws will either be sheet metal screws or machine screws, depending on the age of your table. Now we're going to be flipping the base over. This is obviously a lot easier if you don't have the cushions on top. Like that. We've got our bottom cover here. Remove all of these screws. So, have your uplift motor here, right? Uh, if you're taking the motor off, you want to make sure that the connector on the inside is disconnected before you take it off. Like that. So, we've got that disconnected. And there's also sometimes a zip tie holding that connector to the other wires, but we can take that off once we have the motor off. It's going to be a lot easier that way. So now you take your 3 8 wrench, and we're taking off all these nuts. They also have a lock washer on the other side of them. You want to make sure that that doesn't fall anywhere, get stuck like that. Now, as we saw before, we have that other nut. Isn't going to come just straight off because it butts up against the um, actuator housing or the uplift tube. So 
So what we'll need to do is we'll need to pull the motor backwards while we're spinning that nut off. got the motor out. Still need to clip that zip tie. We got some clippers here. There we go. So one thing you want to make sure you keep track of when you're taking off the motor is this drive piece right here. It can just come straight on and off. This is essentially what transfers. It's like a a universal or just a drive joint so to speak that transfers the power from the motor to the actuator and we'll show you what the inside of the actuator looks like so that's removal right there so here we have an actuator rod and a motor separate right we've got our joint here and here is the inside of the actuator rod so when you're putting the motor back on, we're doing this on a table because it's much easier to see off the table than it is on the chiropractic table. But you'll have, you can see the input shaft on the actuator rod right there, usually lined up with one of the two, or sorry, a pair of the holes, but you know, especially if it's say screwed out a little bit, sometimes it won't be. But we've got on this, drive joint, a similar one to the inside, just perpendicular. So usually what you'll want to do, you can see the line there lines up with these two holes, and the line here lines up with these two holes. So they're going to mate just like this, and you'll want to make sure that the cord is coming out through the top, so in line with the actuator rod. Got those lined up, these lined up. and you shouldn't see any extra space. There shouldn't be any difficulty there. If you do have difficulty, you might be able to wiggle the motor a little bit because maybe this had gotten a little bit crooked. Um, but if you're getting either spacing in between or it doesn't feel like that it's mated properly, then you'll wanna take that back off and make sure that A, this is all the way in on the output shaft for your motor and B, that it's lining up properly with the input shaft on your actuator. Just like that. And then we're gonna be putting back on these lock washers and nuts. If you'd like, you can omit that top nut and lock washer because the three on the bottom do the job great. And that top one, as we saw earlier in the video, can become kind of a pain when you're trying to service the motor. So we're just gonna throw these back on and tighten them. And that's all there really is to it. The installation is reverse of removal. There's nothing, uh, nothing too weird there. So, get these. And then once you got these tight and you're good to go.